All right, once again, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Play the Hits. Max, what the fuck happened to our dog? We gotta rescue our pupper. We gotta rescue the it's fucking stolen. pupper. He's, he's fucking scared and alone. <laughs> Possibly at the bottom of this river, like... I'm pretty sure we, we ejected him from the car, like, in what I can only describe as a fairly callous move of self-preservation. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, I might have made the same dog with my- same call with my dog, but my dog's an asshole. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why am I forgetting which car is our car? Wait. Oh shit! Okay, so this is just showing my like my last known parking space. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. I guess we're gonna go save the dog first. All right. That'd be yeah. That'd be some shit if they parked in the <laughs> in the same place and didn't drive. Yeah right. Crazy like, far this away. This is the worst theft ever. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never suspect to look where they originally parked. Right. <laughs> I, you know I wouldn't. <laughs> Oh, did God. you um did you see the trailer for the Hyrule Warriors? Yeah, oh dude, so let, let's finish our last topic of conversation. So yeah, you need to come here and we need to go drinking. Like okay. yeah. legit. <laughs> like um I'll, I'll take you to C3. So the other cool thing about C3, um they have like a very limited food menu, but it's like the best food in town. Like it's Yeah. It's it's really good stuff. Like if nothing else, you can order the burger and it's like one of the best burgers you've ever had. Um hmm. But, you know, they have all kinds of other stuff, too. Um, oh, here we go. Damn it, Camus, I'm sorry. I'm gonna try to dry you off, I guess. Wait. You can't talk that to wasn't a now. dog. That you was, probably like, a... Me. So, wait, is the dog just, can, like, an emoji I'm sort of thing? Yeah, it's just a, it's just a voice robot thing. Oh, interesting. Oh, no. All right, whatever. Control. Anyway, so why did Control. I buy it at the goddamn doghouse? It's not for him. But, yeah, we, we need to drink proper since we haven't really done that since my birthday and since, you know, the world sucks right now. And How did you... Yeah. Yeah. We track it. We'll do, Listen, make like a long maybe, weekend out of it or something. You, kid. Don't sweat it. Yeah, maybe. Uh, also, Seriously? before that, maybe we just do like a, a drink on the stream or something, and and try to actually yeah, you know, <laughs> feel something the next time. We haven't done like a something else since the first one that we did. Like I did one with Nick yeah. to support Bernie Sanders, but that didn't end well. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? You didn't see that one where we played Super Bernie no. Bros? Oh, Super Bernie Bros. Uh, no, I have, actually, I did see, like, what, the first few minutes. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a something else. It was, like, a half-hour episode, and it was just Super Bernie Bros. <laughs> it's it didn't cool. end well. <laughs> but yeah, we need, like, I, I fully intended to, like, make a whole series out of something else, but, like, I don't have that many good ideas. So, yeah, like, if you just want to drink and not chat me, and we can like my... and then we'll, we'll figure it out something. from there yeah, yeah. <laughs> and peruse political articles while we're a little wasted yeah that's uh that sounds like a fantastic idea. the only thing is though this would have to be like either a sunday night or uh uh maybe like third well, maybe I could get away with thursday night but whatever is a weekend like whatever passes for a weekend in your and my world okay yeah we'll we'll have to see what because both of those nights would not work yeah, I guess and maybe like I could pull a Saturday as long as like um, not too sloshed. But... Oh, I don't. Yeah, I don't know about a Saturday night. That's for well, you. Well, because because right now like um, I we only have like the one service in the morning and it's not like super early, so I could still pull I that gotcha. off. Okay, okay. So, sa Saturday nights aren't bad right now. All right, that's good. I, I we're gonna see how my what my schedule's like because um, it seems like. The one pretty. of the places, well, something in Amita that I applied to, uh, another hospital that's close by to the one I work at, uh, they're gonna cross what they say cross train me. Um, so it wasn't like, oh, here's now an suck. interview, blow, well, <laughs> <laughs> and and we'll see what happens. It's it's basically instead of an interview, they're like, hey, when can you come orient, like do oh, orientation? Tight. It's like, oh, sweet, okay, so that's I guess cool. I already yeah. have this. Nice. So they're basically treating it like. You know, hey, work work your days, you know, at ECT, and then on some off days, you know, you can you can work here as well. And it's like, oh, all right. So I think it'll probably even be like the same paycheck and stuff. And it's like, all right, cool. my car. Sorry, go. Wait, on. what? Seriously? Yeah, dude. Like, look, Grim's hub them all. They're fucking oh, selling shit. my car. 
need to figure out how to get down there. Dude, that, that's really awesome, though. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I, I definitely need money. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. You know what their what their needs are. How many? Because I think it's gonna be PM. Which okay. I haven't worked PMs in a long time, but yeah, yeah. We'll we'll see how it works out. You know, dude. I hate to say this. They're building a new hospital here in Bloomington. <laughs> Where? Wait, what? Really? Yeah. Like <laughs> it's like triple the size of the existing one because like yeah. the population has exploded so much here because of the university. Gotcha. They're like hiring people from all over and. Yeah, it's it's a pretty Sweet. big it's a pretty big deal for like a uh, a college town. That's cool, especially one that um, because of the hospital, like so much of it is like their medical degrees and, and programs and things like that. Like there, there's now, two, is, there's actually is three, it an Indiana University hospital? Yeah, or? it is. Okay, so, and there's like three big things that Indiana University does. There's the um, there's the hospital, there's the Kelly Business School, and then there's the um, the music program. The, oh, gotcha, the Jacobs okay. School of Music, like those, those three things all have pretty like, you wouldn't think that like in Podunk, Indiana, like they would be as prominent as they are, but like they have like international, you know, scholars travel here to to take part in these things. It's pretty cool. Yeah, sometimes you wouldn't expect some of these places, these highly accredited programs. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, Kelly Business School, yeah. I, I know, like, uh, I use business schools is pretty highly rated. Yeah. Um, like, I didn't know, like, IU was as legit as it was until I moved here. The uh, college I originally went to for literally one semester was, it was like the third ranked best engineering school school in the country and oh, it's really? just like university of illinois like the state college and it's like oh wow like it, it was it's rated or at least at the time when i went there it was rated uh like above purdue which is like purdue's known for its engineering school yeah purdue's great why didn't you say was using my best pitch and then of course like number one was mit or something mit yeah just mm hop -hmm. Cloudpunk pays me either way so if you'll excuse me i got wait did cloudpunk screw me to deal with yeah, thanks for all your help. Cloudpunk screwed me. They took my uh, car. What's going on? Cloudpunk took your car? What? Yep. Oh. Wait, did you? What I happened? You have no. to pay for it again? Automata. Please say your name, sir. Uh, I don't know. Install new Automata custom personality. Wait, did I just get a new car? Drive. That will be fifteen hundred. This is a new one. Activation. Whoa. Charge it to Cloudpunk. <laughs> nice. <laughs> hey, my dog. Are you okay? Uh, yes. So this whole time I thought Camus was an actual talking dog, not like an AI that I had that just been, programmed that would have been to look like a dog. It feels different, bigger. I can think more clearly. This is yes. A fucking nice this car. Look at this thing. Improvement. Seems like it. It's like a Rolls. Look at this. Yeah. Did it feel like you were gone? Long? I mean, like a 1980s Rolls, but still a Rolls. <laughs> it was quiet. Kind of reminds me of Knight Rider a little bit. Oh yeah, Me like too. a Trans Am. Is better than being yeah, a little stolen. bit. Uh, Doesn't feel any different. I wanted but... to ask a question. What is it? What happened to Mom? You've been offline for a while, Camus. Mom isn't around anymore. Do you really want to know what happened? Oh shit! Will it make me sad? Deeply. Yes. Being a car is fun. But I am excited to get a new friend. Oh, so let's get back on topic again? here. You well, brought you up uh, some be. Nintendo stuff. You you, you go ahead cat. and start. Oh, no. oh yeah, Hyrule Warriors, which I thought you would Nintendo that. has well, been. I mean, they didn't have a proper E3, there, obviously, because no one did. Beep, beep. But Why instead of beeping? like having there some other like Nintendo Direct, I feel like they've really just split their their announcements into tweets and the odd direct here and there so it's just like okay i guess they're not really not going to have a fall lineup but they do have the the mario 3d all-stars which is like all right sweet um but then now like the, the just another oh yeah here's another not quite correct just a, a trailer basically with with eg anuma like this game it's like oh shit like it was such a surprise right you know they they keep they keep coming out with these little surprises so. i know nintendo's gotten like great at that like oh th wouldn't it be awesome if we released like mario sunshine and galaxy and 64 all together oh by the way it's coming out in two months <laughs> yeah <laughs> like okay, it's like cool. hey paper, paper mario like oh you want another paper mario come out about 40 days like yeah, oh right. not like, even it was, like, it was like a month or less it was like oh shit okay 
I, yeah, I love that they do that now. Like, that's kind of their thing. They just, like, spring these really great releases on you. It's like... And, you, and so that's one thing, like, getting. Nintendo doesn't have anything for 2020. I mean, it's like Animal... And that's it. And, and it's like, bam, Damage here's a new Paper Mario. Are frozen. And the here's... Doors are locked. We can't oh, even shit. Land. Oh. It hurts. They're holding us. It's... Your vehicle is uh, currently being locked down by CorpSec Authority based on a data access violation. Oh, for God's sake. Please take your hand off your controls and deactivate your automata. I am fighting. Fucking Nazis. Uh, I can <laughs> it. It's no use, Camus. You'll just overheat your processor. Shut down for now. Huh. But, but yeah, so like, I was not expecting It'll be okay. freaking just Hyrule Warriors to be a full-blown prequel to Breath Camus. of the Wild. No. Like, like a story okay. prequel. Yeah, it's not like just a yeah. side game, like, you know, what if this happened? Wowie. No, it's like fucking yeah. legit. And it's like, I liked the look of Hyrule Warriors. I Like, it was basically all these characters. And a lot of times they looked a little more like grown up or just like very serious and yeah. like, ooh, like, you know, taking it to that Chinese legend hero like level, basically. Yeah, sure. But looking at this sequel, it's like, wow, Nintendo is really letting Koei Tecmo have access to all their assets. Absolutely. Like, these, these look like the Breath of the Wild characters, like uh -huh. 100%. You know? Yeah, it's Hyrule. like the exact same engine almost, like from what yeah. I can tell. They definitely look look exactly the same. Only now, Why you know, you doing this? different moves, and they're able to do all the shit. Fucking awesome! Like, yeah, seriously. To play as the warriors and play as Zelda, it looks like, and like Link as a knight. Oh, mm -hmm. that's so. Cool. It's like the sequel I never knew I wanted. Yeah, like I'm, I'm actually like I, you know, I thought the first Hyrule Warriors looked cool, but you know, the Dynasty Warrior games have never really been my jam, so I kind of passed. Yeah, on. yeah. Like. If the Switch one ever came down in price, I'd probably buy it, but it's not going to. Um, but I may yeah, actually like buy, you know, the the sequel on release day. Yeah, D I, just, I think just because I will. like I'm curious, like how they flesh out like the story of Breath of the Wild. And, like I'm kind of, I don't know like if it's gonna follow the strict um, Dynasty Warriors formula or if we're actually going to get to see a little bit of. Hyrule before like civilization went to shit, you know? It'd be yeah, kind of like cool a little to be bit able more to story than typical. Bit. Yeah. That would be awesome. I mean, I, I, just... I, I doubt it. But even then, like, I, I would play it just for the story. I mean, I don't, it seems like Nintendo, especially with Zelda lately, they've really been on board with, with letting one, the Zelda just franchise mm -hmm. be taken into other companies' hands a little bit. Because it's all um, worked out well. It's, it's been like, really what was impressive. That, the, the Cadence of Hyrule, which is mm -hmm. like that indie company that made Crypt of the Necromancer, mm -hmm. that was such a shock. It was like, what? Like, you're you're gonna give your <laughs> IP to this to this little like indie developer, but it worked right. out well for them. Yeah, you know. Well, you know what's and crazy is that they've actually been doing that since the early 2000s. It was um, Capcom who did the um, oh Minish Cap, Minish right? Cap, and the port of Link to the Past for the GBA. Wait, which, which port? Oh. Oh, really? Yeah, Link, Link to the Past plus Four Swords. Capcom had a hand in that. Oh, fuck. I never knew that shit. Yeah. And huh. and every time they've lent it out, like, they end up with some of the best games in the series. I, I mean, granted, that one was a port, but the Minish Cap was freaking awesome. Yeah. You've always said the minute, like, this one I got to... Yeah, you really do. one I've, I've never really thought of. Like, oh, yeah, Minish Cap. It's, but... it's like, seriously, no joke, like, right up there with... God damn it, now I have to remember how to enter this damn bar. Um... Uh, <laughs> um, it's right up there with a link to the past for me for like my favorite two D Zelda. Yeah, no joke. Yeah, I got. I definitely got to play it. And links, you know, but, I, like I just like two D Zelda. Like Link to the <laughs> Past, Link's Awakening, Minish Cap. There, there hasn't um, been a bad two D Zelda, worlds. has there? No, like e like even the weakest the one, which is probably awesome. the original, is still pretty damn good. Yeah, even the original game, like I, I, I appreciate it for what it is, be so free. And so, like, oh shit! I found this. Now I can do this. Like, yeah. that feels very exciting. You know, it's crazy to think that like that game could be released in 2020, and like people who didn't know it was a Zelda might just think, oh, like, wow, what cool retro visuals. But I really love the way that it's wide open, and you can like choose your own adventure. Like that, <laughs> right? that would be like that would be like a novel concept today. And they Zelda did it in fucking 1987. Stuff. Yeah definitely pioneering some things yeah well and like but, things that are still pretty 
you know, hard to come by. That's yeah. Nice. Wait, I'll hear for juice? sex. No, Lomo is expecting me. No juice, no jazz. Fuck you, dude. I'm not here for the jazz. Unless you give me a reason you should get in, you ain't getting in. Does Lomo know you're dealing at the door? Uh, I'm not dealing. Just go in and keep your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. Drugs. Get your drugs. <laughs> Where are you? I still don't feel good. Are you oh, in danger? Canvas. But yeah, dude, so um, Zelda and then freaking yes, that dangerous. Mario Direct was the most like, in the there wasn't a single thing that they announced that I don't want I to buy. To cool. which no, is right? Oh my God, that Game & Watch? Dangerous. I was just like, that looks yeah, dude, fucking like, awesome. I want that immediately. But uh, the yes, problem is I like, I know I can't possibly get all this stuff because some of it's like really limited release, right? Yeah. Like the Game & Watch I think is only going to be like one round and um. Even like Mario 3D All Stars, like I should be able to get it, but it's it is kind of one of those like blink and you'll miss it sort of things. Yeah, I mean you can, I mean you could just go. I'm sure you try, you'll get it. But I was a little worried, so I pre-ordered the same day the direct came out because uh, Best Buy was doing pre-order. So I was like, yeah, oh, they were? 60 bucks. Yeah. Oh crap! Because I want the what kept me from pre-ordering was I want the physical edition. I didn't oh, yeah, know Best Buy was doing that. Best Buy's doing a physical edition. Oh, I wonder if other people are doing it. They might still be. You might still be able to get it. I don't know. I'm going to try. Like, yeah. As soon as we're done recording this. <laughs> yeah, um, was... Am I the only one who sees Obama? Like, look, look at Lomo's Down face. There? No, not in the bottom left, but like, the, like his actual character model. Lego Obama with an eye patch. Fucking Obama with a cyber eye. <laughs> look at that. You mean to tell me that's not Obama? <laughs> yeah. Like that's Lomo Obama. Lomo Obama. Lomo Obama. That's right. Look at that shit. I mean, yeah, d definitely ignore like the weird white guy with the cigarette in the bottom left. That's Lomo Obama. I need someone I can trust. Take a That's awesome. <laughs> Why not just let Corpsec arrest me? Nullgate scan a vehicle at the molecular. Story is getting kind of interesting. Now. It is actually like I've I've been paying attention even though we haven't been talking about it. It actually is really good. It's like yeah. It turns out Cyberpunk is actually kind of a shady organization. Can't be fooled. But then we're you know helping out other shady dudes to stop them. Yeah. Suffice it to say, there are patterns which bring us to a higher state of consciousness but there are patterns which bring us to a higher state of consciousness so distracting patterns so you're excited for the for the what do you call it the 3d all-stars yeah 3d I mean, all it's kind of hilarious that you know we just gave up on mario's sunshine but i'm kind of curious to see like if it maybe plays a little better on the switch yeah if you can <laughs> I don't know if it'd be a pro controller. I mean, I guess you could be honest, Rania. Like, I feel like the pro controller to... would make anything better. Yeah, yeah. I, I think for that, to try the pro controller and see how that works. But playing Galaxy again? Oh, shit. And, I was going to say, it, be, it would be a chance to finally complete Galaxy. And, you know, just to have Mario 64 as a portable game. Holy shit. Yeah, awesome. I mean, I know it's I mean, really, Mario been... Galaxy. Can you imagine, like... Like, doesn't it fucking blow your mind that... It's, it's 2020 and Mario Galaxy is about to be a handheld title. Yeah, that, that, is, that insane. is insane. That's like one of the most beautiful and games ever made. We won't tell it was it was a crazy game, and I still think about sick and tracking them. Like what? Oh, you're breaking up there. Oh, it was like one of the best soundtracks for a game. Mario Mario Galaxy. I mean, better sound. Odyssey. Mm -hmm. That guy gotta say like. Well, they so, yeah, went full the play, orchestra with that one, right? Oh yeah. To play that as a portable game, yeah, it's just kind of like, okay, we zenith of, of portable games. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Well, like, that, that's the crazy thing. Like, sometimes I forget that the Switch is even a portable system because, like, the games on it are so beautiful. Like, it doesn't matter that they don't have the same graphical fidelity as, like, the PS4 Pro. Like, Nintendo has their art style so on point that, like... It's like playing a Disney movie, you know? Like, yeah. you, you don't care if it's not photorealistic. It just looks so good. You never feel like the games look bad. That's no. never been a complaint. And, and, now, and now, like, every single Switch game, which looks amazing on your, you know, 4K TV, also still looks damn good when you undock it and, you know, you're just playing it on the shitter. You know? It's just... <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and that, it's... That's, that's crazy to think about. Like, that's... I... 
The Switch has been out for like what three years now? Four? Uh, yeah, three, like th almost three and a half. Yeah, so like people are starting to take it for granted. Like, yeah, this is just what technology is. No, like I'm I'm old enough where like I can remember what you know. Like if I was playing a portable game, then I knew what I was getting. I was getting a dramatic you know graphical downgrade but you know it was portable so very cool yeah. right like I, I can take it with me wherever i go but like nintendo's just like no that was the trade-off yeah you, you, there's no trade-off anymore like <laughs> what you see on the big screen is precisely what you have with you when you're on the shitter <laughs> yeah that is kind of crazy nervous. because i play it in docked mode most of the time nervous. Yeah, but when i when i take it out for a while and usually right when i play now, undocked it's at home still just yeah. going around to a different room uh -huh. and it, and i and i do I think I about really when the, when it's undocked i do we'll think about like the game boy and the, the advance and the ds yeah, right? the ds even which was a great system like the ds like, blew my mind when that came out like the first game i got that was mario 64 and it's like holy shit i am playing Playing Mario 64 once again while I'm taking a deuce. You know? <laughs> like this is mind blowing. And, and what's crazy is like the the, the DS version actually was graphically superior to the N64. Yeah. And what was that? Eight years later? Like that was nuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2005. I mean, yes, the D-pad was was awkward as hell. Or you could use the. But you know, I got used to it terrible. pretty quick. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It, no, like it, the D-pad worked. worked just fine. But yeah, Galaxy, and then just, uh, and, and, you know, Galaxy is going to be upgraded, you know, to, to look a lot better than it did on the Wii. It's... Yeah, well, that's just, that's the, the only, the only complaint that I have about it at all is that they didn't take the opportunity to just, you know, plop like Mario Odyssey's character model onto all three of the games, you know, just. I gotcha. I mean, I mean. For, for me, that price, 64. they probably could have re-released all three of them for sixty dollars, which I, I I guess overall I would prefer it this way to to get like mm -hmm. a three pack. But oh, at the yeah. same time, like, can you imagine like the levels of Mario sixty four looking like Mario Odyssey? That would be crazy. Dude, I feel like sixty four was definitely kind of a missed opportunity to kind of remake that game a little bit, mm -hmm. like and at least to some like, extent. Yeah, not. You don't have to do it from the ground up where it's like all this different. No, it's just like the textures and everything. Which, again, I'm not saying that's an easy, the easiest yeah, thing Yeah, because ever. the textures on but, the 64 were notoriously garbage even. Yeah. You know, like even but at the time, like you, you, like even like when 3D technology was new and mind-blowing, it's like, okay, so is that sand or is the ground just on fire? Like, you know? <laughs> that's true. Uh, yeah, like games like hey, Mario 64 or something pretty bad f-zero x the, the, the textures were kind of awful but um yeah that was that was kind of like the first foray into 3d it's like yeah we're just going to take the textures from like the the free use um database basically of like sand and gravel and stuff right rather than rather than make it ourselves but it's like well, it still look good for the time sure why the hell not but it's like yeah i I hope I don't sound too like, oh, what did they remake 64? Like, like I'm, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Not selfish, but uh, spoiled. Like yeah, like, a little bit. Why, why aren't we getting enough? But, you know, it is $60 oh, yeah. that we're... Of course. And they're... Well, you're gonna have to give um, a good reason for like Spyro, or what was it? What's I think business? no, Spyro did do this, but but also friend. Crash Bandicoot. Is yeah, they that, that's what they like keep all comparing of them to. Thanks. Like they they show like the Spyro trilogy and the Crash that's Bandicoot trilogy, which are both forty dollars, and yeah. they have like the massive house. graphical so overhauls there. and everything. Why would you choose the <laughs> You know, the Mario one, which is you know technically a trilogy, but no graphical overhaul whatsoever, other than bringing them into widescreen. Yeah, which they're not bringing Mario sixty four into widescreen. No, they're yeah, keeping the original aspect three. ratio because it doesn't right work here, with some see? parts of the game. Hmm. Yeah, never seen one which is like, okay, that, if that makes sense, if that's too hard, so can cool. I go through, or... Oh, and, but, you and know, I'm it's excited to have 64 you can portable. Fucking do it. Yeah. <laughs> you have the technology. <laughs> You're just not doing yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it's probably a, a little bit difficult. Out of the <laughs> You're not doing it. Right. We'll let you off with the instrument, but you can't take anything else in there. That's all you got? Even still, I'm I'm fucking paying sixty dollars and getting the game. Like, oh yeah, like no question. I'm, I'm still like, I'm still pretty jazzed about it. They they had my money the moment I saw Mario sixty four. Which instrument does he play? <laughs> Whichever you like best, Camus. I like viola. No one likes viola. Please, Fuck you, Camus. We need to talk with you. Oh no, 
It has all gone wrong. <laughs> Shush, Thomas. Keep your cool. I have Senior Sector Officer Rio on my comm. He says you went through a security checkpoint earlier today. He wants to know why you're traveling around the city so much. Just working for my Is friend Obama. Illegal? Look, miss, I just work <laughs> at Gates. But I have to tell you that attitude won't go down well with Officer Rio. Best just be up front and tell us. Do you work for an illicit mem chip manufacturer? Street racing team? Obama, I told you. <laughs> I'm doing shady side business for Barack Obama. <laughs> Please, tell your boss I've never heard of any of them. I play private concerts and I'm very busy, so I Oh, but yeah, like, so the other one. Um, I'm actually, like, way more excited about Super Mario 3D Land on or 3D World on the Switch than I ever was on the Wii U. Yes, I oh yeah, me too, dude. I mean, like additional content. I'm, I'm what Bowser store, or what the what is it called? About Bowser's Fury? Rage or something like that. Yeah, and it's just like cool, cool. I'm down for it. But also, like 3D World is a great game. Oh yeah, great game. Like it just was on the Wii U. <laughs> like that was its biggest sin. It was, and like because of that, like you know, you couldn't really like unless you had a bunch of friends with the Wii U who had like nothing better to do than to haul their system all the way over to your apartment. Like, yeah, but with the Switch, you know, just fucking get online and. It granted, oh the Switch's God. online isn't perfect, but it's still a lot easier and better to use Dude, than the... that's the craziest thing. I don't understand why they didn't, like, I went online, like, a couple days okay. later and know, saw that 3D World has online functionality, online... Lolo it's like, it's a why for did they not announce that during the Direct? That Maybe like, right. computer virus? that's humongous. Why would they... That makes it such a different experience, you know? That's like advertising a, a two-bedroom apartment as like, like a answer. studio and, and asking... just being forgetful like that's such a crazy like that's awesome that's fucking awesome i i, I don't know i just think that's so cool i'm so jazzed about it. like yeah me too like Mar that, that Mar might actually be one that we should really do on this channel like i know we're doing a whole oh, bunch of sure. mario games but mario games are fucking awesome <laughs> yeah, and you we could we could one we could blast through that one I feel like and and two right. like we like could it, do it in bite sized chunks that's yeah. fine like, like it would be different if we had like a fan base on this channel that was like clamoring no you got to play like Metal Gear now <laughs> you got to do something to, more serious you but like better redo Super Metroid and Illusion of Gaia right that's, that's the great <laughs> thing about having like a unsuccessful channel is you can play whatever the fuck yeah, you want do whatever the fuck we want to do that's yeah. right <laughs> though I do want to I do actually want to redo those Metroid games like with decent audio oh, yeah. quality. I'm Especially since that. you found that randomizer for Super Metroid. Oh yeah. Ooh, I still like, gotta play that. Put, we can put fun. a different twist on it where we, where we can. Like, you know, and and even then, like maybe Metroid Zero Mission, like I could pass on it. Like it, the, the original was fine enough, even with the bad audio quality, and like it it was kind of the weakest link out of the original ones that we did. Um, so so like Super Metroid and AM2R again. Like AM2R is just a joy to play in. It'd be great to get yeah. that with like decent audio fidelity, because like the the redone soundtrack um, is one like one of the best like fan compositions I've ever heard of anything yeah. ever. That's still that's like on the level of Undertale. It is. Oh my Nuts. gosh! How this person put all this together? Like, yeah, a a AM AM two R is a modern masterpiece. And and I have to say like Nintendo does so many good things, you know, and I and I know they could do. For Metroid, Cavus, but me? this guy did a better a better re-release of Metroid 2 than they did. Yeah, sure. they, it, it, that's go? true. Like, what and I, and I actually really enjoyed the 3DS the um, Metroid hey, Cavus, 2 remake, but yeah. Oh shit. No. It locked. But AM2R was just better. better. It, was it really was. It says yeah. It, it's like the the Nintendo remake. Do you have one? And AM2R felt like a long time ago before it became ruined. I don't know. It, it felt like if the game were today and somehow no, we still no had the awesome sense of peace of it's deserted. you know Maybe I'll find the like the, the early nineties or something yeah, right. when it came to like uh we what fun games control. were, you know. Let's try not to make it sounds kinda of weird because obviously games are a lot of fun these but it's just like if somehow Metroid two never came out and then it was released today as an indie, that's what it would look like. Yeah, and Nintendo did the three D. Nintendo the did the remake. Zoom, what are you doing? I just got like an Zoom's invitation to up. to sign into my Zoom account. Like, no, I don't want to fucking a... work right now. <laughs> I got Facebook was bugging me yesterday. Be like, hey, you be an admin of the challenge group. 
and it was a it was a group I was in from like 2016 or something. It's like what wait, what? Huh? Who did this? Like, Weird. Did you remember when Facebook was a new thing and there were like all those like groups that you could make for, oh, for yeah. everything and anything like that? That and was like most the main of the groups social. only had like 12 people in it or something. Right. It was like yeah. college students who like beer, 2,000 oh, members. But this that, one is college students who like Paps Blue Ribbon beer, 500 members. It, just, it was stupid, but it like, was, they didn't really yeah. serve any purpose. But No, they didn't. And I feel like a lot of those groups oh, are still right, around, terminal. but Let's they don't see. They do not do anything Maybe anymore. I like, I remember it'd be like, oh, this group oh. is that feeling when you're Wait, stepping you out of your way to, cr to step Can on that you? one crunchy leaf or something. You? Yeah, right. Oh, so yeah, I remember like that. 20,000 members or something. I know. That was tickets? so ridiculous. I am cool. God, like, when you look at Facebook today, and, like, granted, I'm not, I'm, name. for all intents and purposes, I like, really cool. not on Facebook at all sure, right now, whatever. but Can I it's just such a different, it evolved into something so different than it was. It was basically just, like, this goofy, weird, like, college students only sort of thing when it came out. More than this wasteland? Now yes. it's it's More its own beast. Novellas? Like I, I yes. mean, granted, social media I mean, in yeah. general is completely different than what it was 15 was years ago when we started using it. But holy shit! Yeah, it it drives the conversation so enough? much, Another you know city? that it, it no. didn't at all. Maybe. You know, back if in 2005, is, it didn't like it wasn't Nothing. news in and of itself, and now I it is like friend. That's 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 a thing that wasn't really happening back then. Yeah. At the same, I do feel like groups are better today because the they have a the they're a little bit more controlled but they have a be. like a wider Extra reach so you'll have yeah. groups with like 30,000 people beach. but with people you actually want to talk to yeah you know? because that's what it does it, it, it filters in like only like the the content from people that you know or, or talk to or at least there's like some connection there you're some mad discarded ai right Oh, what's this is what happens when I don't know. I think I'm about no to die to or become part of the AI years. consciousness. No humans soon enough. Oh, shit. The gate is open. What? So really? this thing must be nice. controlling the city, I'm uh, guessing, somehow. I hope you feel better with yeah. AI terminal. I have to go. <laughs> we will speak again. When we do, I will ask you to make a choice. Be ready. Okay, my choice so, is but no. Thanks for opening the gate for me. <laughs> huh. Well, I feel like this is gonna come there's, back there's and bite the boss me in the of the ass. game. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm clearly like this is the the slums in Midgar now. <laughs> God, that was freaking FF7, man. I'm still not over that. That was such it's, a be no, beautiful game. I, I'm not gonna be over it. What did they do? What did they do, Max? I mean, I'm still glad I played it because it me was just too. there's just, there's still the parts I'm going it? to grab, you hold on to. And be like, man, wasn't this awesome? It's it's yeah, having a remake of this just, game and look at this. And like, and this yeah, is so being cool. able to see like this great really scene strange. from my childhood Let's and like beautiful going. 4K. The and... get out of here, the better. And, but but they they just couldn't make it perfect. They, they just, just had to. They couldn't leave well enough alone, you know. No, exactly. They couldn't leave it alone. It was just like, oh, they can't really make this so good. And then they did. Right. And then they're like, and then it's you know, like, this hey guys, crazy thing that we've accomplished. Yeah. Let's fuck it all up. Yeah, right. Let's like, do more. guys, this is a little bit too good. <laughs> you know, it would be really great. Fucking Kingdom Hearts again. <laughs> Fucking, let's just put some Kingdom Hearts up in here. <laughs> like why though like why why kingdom hearts because like let's be honest that's what that that's what the end of the game was it's just like in every it, way it possible was. they just fucking kingdom hearts all over ff7 oh yeah it, the, this huge thing this humongous thing that like there was nothing like that at ff7 i mean yeah they had the weapons Need to talk to but the weapons were not as yeah, big as this here. thing that not like destroyed a town well. because it was like a third of its size or something. Yeah, like Last time I was that was a Kingdom Hearts. Drunk? Like, here's the darkness heart. So this I know. Humongous oh. thing. It's... What a yeah. what a fucking shitty way to end that game. <laughs> I feel like it's Nomura again. His, his He's doing his thing. Yep. Through. Can't sleep anymore. Sometimes I get strung out. I'm sure your okay, job control. is just as Jesus. tough as mine. Right. This guy's no weird. Idea. I don't like your control. Rumors. Sounds like this has been a, a rough night for you two. Run-ins with. This is all one night. I keep forgetting that. Am I in trouble? Wow. 
You're making your deliveries, making waves, surviving. It's all good, Rania. Come by Cloud Punk HQ to get a new package. Hey, Control, I got stuck in the hollows and... What were you doing down there? I guess I got lost. Anyway, I got <laughs> talking to this broken terminal down there and it said... It said... It said... <laughs> Yeah, so FF7, like, again, like, I, w when I think of, like, the most graphically impressive and just, you know, like, beautiful looking game, like, they didn't have to make it look that good, you know, they, they didn't yeah. have to go to, like, the great pains to, like, reimagine all of, like, the areas of Midgar that we were seeing as children and, like, make them so, like, spot on and instantly recognizable, but at the same time different enough that they're exciting again, and, yeah. and then fucking and they, throw they it out that. the goddamn window. <laughs> uh, the and, and throw it out the window I, uh, by creating uh, even uh, more stuff and putting work into it and being like, oh, yeah, this is what people want. Like, yeah, like the art shit on just like, it's like I know we've talked about an awesome before, Sunday yeah. with instead of a cherry, just with like a dog. Turd or right? Like, I know we've talked about this before at length, but I still like I can't get over that where like there's something about it that's kind of almost unbelievable. Because they, they, like, the first, like, three, no, like, nine-tenths of that game was, like, we know what made FF7 great, and we're gonna, Mediocre. you know, give you yeah. that. Aside and from the, what do you call it? The, the whispers. whispers. But at the same Aside time, from like, that, it was right perfect. up until the end, I was still holding out hope that it was just gonna be, like, some kind of, like, side story. Wait, what? You know, like, really? not, like, the most impactful thing. You know, like, maybe I could live with it. Um, mm -hmm. But no, it, it ended up being worse than anything that I imagined. <laughs> so, ah, yeah. uh. but it's it's yeah. it's a tough pill to swallow. It but is. You know what? I, I'm but, gonna play the sequel yeah. and I'm gonna see what I know. What you got like I'm like a battered spouse for, for Final Fantasy. You know, I'm, I'm gonna play it. You know? Yeah, <laughs> like, me too. When it comes it for to some when it comes to Final Fantasy, I'm I'm never gonna stop playing. There's too much, there's too much history there, too many I know, good like, memories. It's, and it's they, like the only series that can, that I would buy just on nostalgia alone. Well, yeah. True, and it's in food. it's still some one they know how to fucking Why? twist that knife and prey on my nostalgic no feelings. Me. Right. But there is they, and Squaresoft does that more than any other company dog. and and they're nothing like food for They're automata? running out of goodwill from me. There is clock cycles. <laughs> but at the same time, even with the newer games Still moments that I really different. thoroughly enjoy. I mean, oh, I of course, no, with FF7, but, but there was a I lot about FF15 that I really liked. Yeah, same you know? here. Absolutely. Even, even, even if overall, with that game, I was disappointed by, a by a lot of things, mm -hmm. I still really liked it. Yeah, so, 15 is so weird. Keep... It's like, it, it, is. it was a it's fine game, game and I'm thoroughly disappointed with it. Yep, yep. I am a little hungry. Yeah, that's me too. I really, like, my favorite part, though, I mean, this is great, and the the obviously the graphics, the summons, the 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 fighting system. I think my favorite part of that game was exploring the optional dungeons. Yeah. Oh it, yeah. It was just like finding because it was like what four, five, six optional dungeons at least. Like right away. Yeah, and it was like the open world itself was a empty. I mean, humongous. Yeah, because of the car. Um, but 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 very empty. Right. Um, but the dungeons. Once you found one, that was very interesting. It, was it had like the best dungeons of any like modern Final Fantasy. For sure. Like, cause and it felt like there were things to discover. They were so mysterious. Yeah. I mean, one would be like a whole bunch of super stuff with with some awesome treasure mm -hmm. and and one would be like with super weak weak imps that are like oh i'm way beyond this one and amurai that would wreck your shit yeah oh my there. god like that one like right at the beginning of the game like right like if you were to go the opposite way of where the game was encouraging you to go from the gas station and you just yeah. like went back towards uh lucid or insomnia yeah there was that dungeon right there on like that uh reservoir and like right at the fucking bottom was that fucking samurai. And it was like terrifying. Cause you were like so under leveled, but they didn't stop you from going in there. They didn't stop, yeah. And and I really, I really liked that, that the openness with that. And and that was like a horror movie. Yeah, because you, you have like the rotating silhouette. fans and like the lighting effects exactly. and everything. Yeah. And, and the, the imps were like, 
coming into those carts that were pushing themselves and it was like oh shit like that was yeah. pretty scary too but then you saw you, exactly the rotating fans and the light was coming in and 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 the first samurai that you see it's just like he's kind of at a distance and he's yeah. just a shadow yeah and then he would like close the gap real quick and oh just my god kill just you. wreck you <laughs> and it was just like what, what, like what did, happened, I, did final fantasy happened? just give me a jump scare like what the hell <laughs> right and I'm like popping elixirs like it's nobody's business. Just like oh, God. <laughs> I'm just trying to stay alive and get out of there. <laughs> yeah, no, FF15 had some really good like amp ambiance and, and good moments, but yeah, but like the world was just a confusing mess and the story wasn't much that better. Game, I think that game could have been so great if it spent another two years in the oven. Like, I know, or or like just committed to one of its like 50 ideas of what it wanted to be. <laughs> I know that would have been unconscionable to the fans, but if they just took the the the, the Valve or the CD Projekt Red, um, you know, line from the beginning of just like you know what, it's gonna be fucking ready when it's ready. Or yeah, just, that's true. You know, and came out with something one where the DLC baked in into the story, that would have felt like a much more fleshed out story. I still would have had some issues with it, yeah. but a, a, a lot less than I do today. You know, right, if, if all the DLC was like kind of more baked in, not and and not less like a menu thing, but really like in the game. Yeah, I it, it would have felt a lot more complete. But but two, just like fixing some of the things with the with the story that just felt a little like oh, did they they just had to write an ending or they just had to like complete complete these parts of the story real quick like. Yep. They, yeah, and that, that's, that game could have been awesome. Yeah, like, and, and it could have been many a games really where you can great. tell like that's exactly what's happening here. It's like, oh, that's kind of like a weird decision that they made. But here it's like, oh wow, like they meant they meant for this power plant story arc to be oh. really significant. And instead, it's just like, hey, now you're inside a power plant, and here's this guy. Is it Gladiolus? Yep, it's Gladiolus. Yep. Well, that yeah. that was a fun five minute diversion, right? And exactly. And it's just like, wow, look at all these assets that are used for five minutes. That they meant like, to be like major, that. major things, you know? Exactly. Uh, uh, so many ideas I from this game that was like again. half done, and then a new team came in and yeah. it was, okay, we got to take all these and like make a complete game but we're going a different direction Can I ask you know and it's again? go ahead chemist yeah uh, how was like it? like how they built the good. all those trailers good. that you know, ended up food would be the one pretty much not I being in the final game at all Wallace. yeah it's just like well, yeah i know you weren't running on i mean it like is, that wasn't even an alpha build so obviously good. no it is but to like not have not any of that in the junk. game it's just Mom like that did take resources it yeah. took a lot of resources to it build that stuff right to, i know like all of those like a trailer you know, worth of content that they showed they and none of it was in the final game too. yeah <laughs> you know, was, that was so the, weird even like, the trailer that was like two years before the game, the when they changed the name to FF15, yeah, that was the what Insomnia or was it um, Altitia? I don't remember, but I think it was Insomnia, like Leviathan being there. And yeah, or yeah, no, no, no that, that was Altitia, but you know, Altitia. Like, Altitia and Insomnia were both meant to be like major hubs of exploration in that game. Like you were supposed to be able to like drive around those cities and like yeah. explore things, and, and you got to do like maybe like an eighth of that in Altitia, like a little bit. Yeah. It, was, it, it didn't really feel like a real city. It kind of felt like Altitia felt so empty. It, well, it was weird because like it was it was clustered like and it was very beautifully designed but yeah, at the same time sure. it's kind of like you know like how when you walk down main street in disney world and it's like this charming like happy place but you know you can tell it's not a real city right like this yeah, isn't yeah this isn't a place where people live that that's what altitia was like yeah you're right it's like this is nice to look at and there's definitely like stores and stuff but yeah. Like, it's kind of like, you know, at least I'm not like in the middle of like a war zone for a change or like an empty deserted field. But, you know, like there's no shops to duck inside. There's no like side quests to discover or anything like that. I mean, there were there were a couple like battle segments, which really felt out of place in that city. Um, yeah. Like, go, go to this back alley and fight an imp. Like, this is like 80 percent of the yeah, city. Yeah, that was street. weird. Yeah, that <laughs> was it was it was a strange take. But, but yeah. again, like, what choice did they have? It's like you said, they had to get it out. 
And after playing through FF12, pretty That's right, much you everything. Did it. Yeah. Uh, short, short of beating what's his face, he is a mad. I feel like I've done pretty much everything. Nice. And Can't and uh, I totally get I'm you here. when you're I saying like expire. this is such an exciting direction to for Final Fantasy to go. And then 13 too. came out, and again, I, I like 13 a lot. But to see what 12 was I and how open, Hardly. how, oh, it, it fulfilled the promise that yep. 10 started to do where it's just like, look how big we can make these towns. We can I make know. these cities. And it's not big right? and empty. Like, no. it's big and lived in. 12 is like the most packed Final Fantasy. I yeah, I can't believe how much content there is. It, you know, and it's absolutely ridiculous. Like even today, I, I think twelve. Like if you were to do like a completionist run of twelve, I think it's still like the longest Final Fantasy. Bar like none. it wouldn't surprise you know how the, like oh this FF nine uh, item with the brothers took like fourteen years to find or something like that. I wouldn't be surprised if there was like whole side quests in twelve. That, that we have had to found, to you know, because it would be like you talk to this person and they just say some random thing. It wasn't until I was like 60 hours into the game that I realized the, the few side quests that I would randomly pick up. Yeah, it would be like, oh, because this person was talking about it 20 hours ago when I visited yep. Robin Astor last. It would be like every time someone says some kind of weird story or some offshoot thing. Even when none of the words are highlighted, like, oh, this, even when it's just some random story, it's like, that's a side quest later. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, probably significant. Yeah. That's awful. It, it's I, crazy I, I how huge that game 12. is. 12 was just yeah. such a phenomenal game. And it's still, it's like, it still stands, you know, it's, it it's, does. I'm glad it came out and it's like, oh, dad, Final Fantasy as a series didn't go that route, but it's still really nice. We got 12, like what a gift. You know, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if it's not too late though. Like would, would it be so hard so. for Square Enix today just to like buckle down and make a new Final Fantasy that has a, you know, a coherent story and a large semi-open world filled with side quests again. I mean, would that, would that be the worst thing in the world for them to do? I, to the I, they, I feel like they can do it. Like, if you play Lightning Returns, it's like, I feel like if they had a new director, the way they could do it. Flips. Yeah, yeah, that's it's true. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm sorry, Nomura... Nomura's fine. He, he, he's, he's a good, like, a visionary artist. He's an ideas man. Yeah. Like, anyway, keep him in I as a consulting go. person. Right. Even if you have to give him some bullshit title, like consulting director or something. Yeah, right. Don't actually give him any power. No. Don't let him make the actual decisions. Like, Cause but... The guy who can... directed 12, he, um... That was the only like mainline Final Fantasy he directed, right? Um, uh, was it Katase or was it someone? No, I can't think of his oh. name. He 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 did Vagrant Story and Final Fantasy Tactics, and then he and then they brought him on to do Twelve. Oh yeah, um, I have no I idea, think, but, but I know. But, but who that, you're that's the great about. thing. Like he had a very clear vision for what this twelfth entry was going to be. He based it around the universe that they had let him already build um, and just said, okay, wh why the hell can't this be like a mainline Final Fantasy world? And, yeah. And he did it, and it was beautiful. And it was and fantastic. Yeah. It, it was like, and because like it's the same universe as Vagrant Story and Final Fantasy Tactics, it already has a built-in lore and mythology that, you know, like you can know or maybe you don't know it. And either way, like, welcome to this big, awesome world. Yeah, you you would you would hear things about it, and it definitely all seemed believable. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, this because there was never like something that's like wait where the fuck believe our last and you could look into it if you wanted right but if you didn't it still worked just fine the yeah absolutely and I, I love when like they deposit you into like a, a universe that clearly has like other shit going on like you're not the center of the universe some yeah, you, know? you definitely AI didn't feel that way for pretty much most of that game. Yeah, not like, not really until the end when you fucking you know were assassinating the emperor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You paid Cloudpunk to bring you a pizza. It was really you. You sure. brushed shoulders with some night. important people. Yeah, absolutely. Like for this most of that game, uh, more than who, who was uh, the emperor's Couldn't brother? La Larsa. Larsa. Like he's an important guy, and so you would. He was a lot more important than you guys were. You know, I mean, you had Princess Ash, but she was. She was. Um, 
what was it? Sid's idea was to say that she was killed, you know? Right. So she was also probably the most important person in so bad? group. No, Candace, but on fine. the world stage, Actually, yeah, Larsa was a big it. it's too expensive. He would like, there is a he would be part of your party. He Did was more important sign? than... The one that says you are. Oh, you cut out pretty hardcore here. No cold oh, colors, I was just no saying, like, yeah, they, you're right to say, like, yes. you really were not the center of that universe. No, up, and up, that was up kind until of a cool you thing, were at the end. Yeah, well, and, that, and that's anyway, the thing. Like, Final Fantasy XII was the only game that I can think of in the series where, like, the main character you play as is just sort of along for the ride. Like, Vaughn. Like, you know, he he's just kind of seeing all of this interesting shit happen, like, with Vosh and Balthier and Ash and. Like, he, I mean, he's certainly involved in it, but, like, he's not the driving force of the story, you know, like, like say, yeah. Cloud or Noctis is. Like, the, the universe straight up revolves around Cloud and Noctis in their respective games. Like, without them, there wouldn't be any forward momentum to the plot, right? But, you know, yeah. you could you could deposit Vaughn somewhere else and, like, see a completely different part of the story... And like the main overarching thing would still be going on, right? Like yeah. because it's it's Ash and it's Bosch that are pretty much driving the plot, and Balthier who's kind of stringing everybody along a little bit. Yeah, um, Vaughn, if anything, would be like kind of that voice, that almost that annoying voice. It's like, wait, why why can't it be this way? You know, yeah. what's going on? And he would, in his in that small way, drive the story. Uh, but basically, basically, it's just like stealing Ash's resolve, me. You yeah. know. Um, but yeah, other than that, he was like the kind of the drop in character that just happened to get right. caught up with with uh, uh, both your shit. Yeah, you know, and, then and, and it's kind of interesting, the... too, because like, um, you know, like I said, Vaughn is the lens through which you see the game. But I, I don't really consider him the main character. Like, I wouldn't even say 12 has a main character. It's kind of like six in that way, because, yeah, you know, there, there's parts where the story really revolves around Ash. Wait, why, are, why do I have two cars in the map here? There's another one down here. We should check it out. Um, and then there's parts where, like, oh wow, this is really all about Bosch. And it's like, oh wait, we're in, um, we're in the Empire now, and and really Balthier is, like, yeah, Balthier's right? interaction with Sid. That's what's really driving yeah, the all, plot. Yeah, all of a sudden that was that was kind of a fun. Dude, uh, the the twist. the bit near the end, um, like the the Pharos Lighthouse is for all intents and purposes the final dungeon. The right? final dungeon. Yeah. When you get to the top of that and like. Sid, um, it's not quite a self-sacrifice, but he definitely, you know, kills himself so that, you know, his weird ideals can come to fruition. And yeah. that that one line with Balthier where he looks at him and he goes, was there no other way? Like, dude, I fucking lost it. Like, <laughs> that, that, was, that was the brilliance of 12 storytelling is that it was such a slow burn from Balthier as, you know, this kind of enigmatic, charismatic sky pirate, this kind of like playboy, um, like doesn't really care about anything except treasure. And then it's like, oh, there's clearly more to him. And it's like, oh, wow, he's a fucking hero and he just lost his dad. And, yeah. you know, like that was such a great evolution. And like to the point yeah. where like the ending, the ending of the game was really Balthier's ending, you know? Like, oh, yeah, yeah stealing gear shit back? And... Yeah, him, like, kind of, sort of sacrificing himself, and you're not sure if he's dead, and then he comes yeah, back and takes his airship. That was such a cool... Oh, yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right, yeah. And, yeah, you do see it you, you see it a little bit through Vaughn's eyes, but then Pinello's the one narrating the letter, and then you also yeah. see that Ash is now um, reigning over her kingdom, and Larsa is now the emperor, and thank God there's finally peace, so that's all really cool. And, and Bosch gets his ending. He's assumed his brother's identity, and he's... Yep. He's restored his honor as a knight. Um, and people but then, there? like, fucking Balthier just swoops in and steals the show. That was that was really cool. <laughs> yeah. Like, like you know, like... And, and, from, and from the front to the back of that game, it was complex, but you always knew what was going on. Like, it actually yeah. followed a coherent plot from point A to... To Z, you know, it was. Yeah, it, it wasn't really confusing. Like in the beginning of the game, it seemed confusing, and I was like, mm -hmm. this is going to be some Game of Thrones shit or something. Um, but as it went on, the the large strokes of it were pretty yeah. easy to follow. It's like, and there okay. weren't like and, major and like plot holes or like where, where the hell did this character come from or you know like what are they doing again? It, it, it all it all fit together, which yeah, which is the biggest problem I had with fifteen, was that like. There were so many, they weren't even red herrings because a red herring is intentional. Like a red herring is a, is a distraction meant to, 
you know, divert yeah, you from what's going on. Yeah, something put there. No, right. there was ghosts in that game. Yeah, yeah, That's 15 just were. had ghosts. Like, like, oh, it turns out the Empire is completely not important. The Emperor, he's just absolutely a non-figure in this game. Yeah, things that you could tell the lead-up was one game, uh -huh. and then what they ended up doing with it was another game. Right, absolutely. That they were like, oh shit, we have to squash this, right. you know? Granted, I really loved Arden, and I, and I thought that he was a, an excellent villain, but, mm. like... Arden really didn't, like, you know, there weren't even any clues about what he was doing until, like, he spelled it out for you. Yeah. W whereas, like, you know, it's very clear that Vayne uh, in FF12 is, like, really power-hungry, but you don't quite know the, the, the lengths he's willing to go until, like, you see that he's killed his father and now the council is being arrested. It's like, oh shit, I guess Vane's in charge now. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know how you felt about him, but I, I um, you, even though he kind of didn't have, like, a very big personality, I really liked Vane as a villain. Yeah. Like, because he was so manipulative and so I think conniving. I think he was okay, but yeah, that's really the strength of him, is that he didn't have to be, like, this bombastic character. No, in, in he, fact, he, he, he was operated just a conniving, best, but do you think this yeah. is nice food he a conniving food? SOB. Yeah, v Vane but, but operated never best acted by, like, like it. yeah, he, he didn't, he didn't what, want you to know who he was or exactly. what he was doing. So that's yeah. why he was good at it, you yeah. know? He, he played kind of behind the scenes, mm -hmm. you know, he I mean, killed his dad and then... Sent his like, brother off to situation. boarding school, basically. You, know? <laughs> yeah. you don't need to know about this, Larson. <laughs> Not your yeah. concern, buddy. And even Lar like Larson was convinced that he... I... Yeah, Lar Later Larsa, on, up until the very end of the game, Larsa was convinced that he could just, you know, make him see reason, right? Yeah. And it's like, oh, shit, you're insane. I've got to help kill you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, well, crap, bro. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But that, that's what made that plot so strong, was that you got the feeling that, you know, these were, like, real people with, like, real human motivations. And, you know, like, maybe if Vane weren't such a conniving dick, um... Larsa could have manipulated him into being a good emperor or something, but no. Yeah, I was wondering how are they gonna how are they gonna make a vein like be a final boss? And it's like, oh yeah, the Neth. That's uh... yeah, and then there was like the whole kind of like um like meta plot of like the gods controlling the world and, and oh and, yeah, and, and like you're kind of the, like you're really kind of working for them at the end because you know Vana is tearing things apart. Um, yeah. Even though they're pretty shady themselves, right? Yeah, and and I like it that it's not like they're benevolent. No, even they're not. They they want they want control. And 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 the one that was like whispering into to Vane's ear and yeah. Vane fucking shit up. I mean, at the same time, that right. Curia, well, not nah, yeah. They called him a heretic. Yeah. Yeah, but he wanted like freedom for, yeah, for, for humans. humans, right? Which is a great idea. Like that's actually what you want too. But the yeah, problem just is just a fucked up way of doing it. Right. It the is, problem is he's he's using Vane to do that, and Vane's a sociopath, so yeah, you, and, you, you and can't Vane, really cooperate with him. It, it, you know, to achieve freedom, it was like the uh, yeah. Robin, was it Robin Astor? That that kingdom had to be sacrificed. Just that, right. That's yeah, and you weren't willing to do that. Yeah, and, which is kind of interesting because like. I can't think of any other Final Fantasy where, like, the motivation for killing the final boss is, like, that morally ambiguous. So much gray area yeah, in that game. It, it's not it like, makes sense. You know, he's, he's, a, he's clearly an evil, like, selfish man, but, like, what he's doing is actually kind of noble if he weren't such a dick about it, I guess, and, like... <laughs> You know, like, you can't say that about Kefka or Sephiroth. Like, they're just straight-up bad dudes no, doing bad things, yeah. right? And, and, and same with Arden. Like, you know, like, he, he got screwed for sure, but, like, he chose after that to just be a bad dude. Yeah. And, to, and to, like, ruin Noctis's life as pretty much just, like, an innocent bystander in all this. Yeah. Um, Vane was obviously a, a, almost like a, a dictator on his way to becoming mm -hmm. one. Um, but he, he wanted to unite... You know, under his rule, yeah, the he could, this part he, of the world, he could have done good things, right? Yeah, but like again, he he was he was gonna blow up fucking Rabbit Astor, so like, what choice I, yeah. did you have? Obviously, your motivations, you know, as as the main character, can't let it happen. And, and a you lot know, of and it, a lot of the plot, but was it's not like, like you're saving the world necessarily. No, like and like a lot of the plot was like warning Ash, like you could easily saying to her that she could easily become vain if she 
you know, pursues power without using that power responsibly, right? So like, yeah. for, for a large part of the middle portion of the game, like the the, the main internal the conflict is like, wow, will, will Ash like packages. be a good queen or will she just seek petty revenge? Can't mm -hmm. to the and I thought that was kind of a cool, of like, moral conundrum for a main character because you know you like usually in a final fantasy game it's like yeah get as get powerful as you fucking can because yes. we're the good guys and you know the good guys yeah. are gonna use that power responsibly right like give me fucking knights of the round i'm not gonna turn it on a village yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know yeah, with that Dash, was such a like, like even her own teammates weren't fully sure that she would do the right thing yeah and she yeah. did there's a lot of it's out there and yeah. she did it's and it's crazy city. that like you said the 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 Acuria ended up like, yeah, you were being their pawn, yeah. but their their way of going about it was giving you this power mm -hmm. and being like, yeah, actually, you can end Bane, you know, with, with this. And, yeah, and, and twelve was a well well written game, and, and like very it helped, nuanced. It and helped that it probably had the strongest translation out of any of the Final yeah, Fantasies. Yeah. And very well acted, even yeah. though the sound design, you know, when when it's remade, obviously. Oh, you this, cut out the again. Sound, the sound has aged a little bit, you yeah. know. But the the how it was acted, you know, with the voice, like these were, it was almost like a play. Like the voice actors were, these were actors. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, but, uh, Baltier, right? The Sky Pirate. Yeah. Oh my God. I, I, yeah, he's like what one of my favorite voice actors ever. Like to the point where like it was it was crazy because um, you know Destiny Two, which um came out a couple of years ago now, but um I had just had a surgery and I kind of had like nothing to play on my couch for like the week that I was recovering, and um, Destiny Two had just come out, so I was like, sure, what the hell? Let's let's do a looter shooter and see what all the hype was about. And I I, I yeah. actually kind of enjoyed it. Destiny Two is a fine game, but um, Valthier's voice actor voiced one of the characters in that game, and I instantly that's recognized that's him. It was like oh, that's cool. awesome. It was hilarious because you know it was Destiny Two, and um, you know it had it had decent voice actors, um, but you know it was kind of like a modern like um, you know, here's your gun, go get him, boy. Uh, sort, of. but but you know not, not, yeah. not quite like that, but you know like very contemporary voice styling. But then you had fucking Balthier comes in. And he's all like, he plays the same kind of character, like really suave, like veteran. And it's like, holy shit, it's Paul Thier. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And, and all, yeah, and like, I, I, I he's, like, he's like such a cut above the other voice actors in that game that he almost sounded out of place. <laughs> yeah, almost. Yeah. Well, uh, and, and in FF12, though, he fit in perfectly because they, they got actors who really could like sell that like old worldy kind of talk. Yeah. Yeah, the whole thing, it was, it did feel like a play. It, it was very well acted. And I kind of appreciated the contrast with Vaughn there because, you know, Vaughn talked like someone who was like lower class, right? Yeah, like, like, like he, uncouth, like the every he grew up on the streets. Right. But but then you got to like Balthier and he's, you know, got this debonair air about him. Bosch very much talks like a prim and proper knight and, yep. and Ash like a queen and... You know, well, it, it was, the they didn't have to put those little details in there, but they did. And, yeah. But, and, and meanwhile, take FF15 as, as a contrast. Like, you know, um, you know, they, they give Ig Ignis, like, the British accent, right? Because he's, like, the smart guy of the group. But even then, they're, they're all still, like... I don't know. It, it, they, they all sound like millennials. It wasn't bad. They yeah, all sound like millennials. Bad. I, I have nothing wrong. I won't fault FF15s, like, no. and how that went. But if you compare it to 12, it's kind of like, oh, uh, but... You quite measure up by by any means did you like wouldn't it wouldn't have been interesting if like all of the imperials had like russian accents you know that's stereotypical but you know that, that's something, something that in the world you know you can identify an imperial from exactly that it's like oh this this world has uh some history some rules yeah. some things that right like the light fans that they see like oh they're they're obviously remembering this like in the production of this game they're taking notes and they're keeping consistency yeah and and with 12 you saw so much and yeah with 15 it's kind of like let's get this cool voice actor let's get what about this person i'm gonna make them sound like this like that's how most games are which like you said is fine but it, it just kind of shows that they they clearly didn't flesh out the world of ff15 as much as they did 12 despite the fact that 15 had a decade-long development cycle and like four movies and a book and yeah 
you know, like this, that, and the other thing all surrounding it. Like, it still didn't feel as fleshed out as like a really solid, you know, 90 hour PS2 game (laughs) that they created in 2006. And it's like the PS2 game, going back to it, it's not like it's it's okay, like lacking so much. Like it had voice later. acting. And that's another, it's like the old games, like we filled in the voices, right? With yeah. our imagination. And and obviously they would sound as good as we wanted them to. Right. FF10 was the first game. It's like, hey, put in some voice acting, take this to the next generation, right? And yeah. it was good. It was, it was, it was yeah. fine. I mean, mind blowing for the time, but yeah, yeah. you're right. But Overall, FF12, like, it was good. FF12 like completed that like it, it kind of fulfilled the promise of Without okay question. here's what voice acting can be and the voices in that game would have basically been the voices that I had imagined you know Absolutely. The, the best yeah. voices they could be you know Definitely. nothing like, wrong with 10 but no, but, but 12, like, they really, like, I don't know if they intended to put together like one of the best voice acted games I've ever heard but they did They it, it, and it completed the personality of these characters Ten was like, oh, you get to hear them. There's, yeah. there's sound to it, the it's word. Just like, it's just like the novelty but, of like, hey, we have voice acting now. Twelve yeah. is like, okay, let's stretch what we can do with and, voice acting. One, one entry later, yeah, mm-hmm. nailed it. You know, Max, I hate to stop having this conversation, but I think we've got a next time on play the hits here. We're gonna, we're gonna deliver rations to those below us here. All right, <laughs> in, the, in the underworld. Maybe we, get, maybe we don't have to get out of our car. Yeah, no, maybe, maybe we keep the doors locked and the windows down just a crack for this place. But uh... <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time, buddy. All right, man. See you then.